This example will walk you through how to account for a note where the principal is going to reduce each period. Tools Limited issued an installment note on January 1st, 2020, with a required yield of 9% in exchange for land that it purchased from the city. The city's real estate agent had listed the land on the market for 120,000. The note calls for three equal blended payments of $43,456 that are to be made at December 31st, 2020, 2021, and 2022. So the first thing we're asked to discuss is how the price of the land will be established. So you can see that it says that the city's real estate agent listed the land on the market for 120,000, but it doesn't actually give us what Tools Limited paid for the land. So we know that the purchase price of the land needs to be recorded at the present value of the future cash flows on the installment note. So let's bring out our financial calculators and calculate the present value of the land. So what do we know? So we know that the we don't know the present value. That's what we need to know. We know that the interest rate is going to be the market yield or this required yield of 9%. So we know that our I is going to be 9%. We know that the number of periods is three because we can see it's paid annually uh, over 2020, 2021, and 2022, so three years. The payment is going to be this. So it's an equal, it's a note calls for three equal blended payments. So this is interest and principal. So we're going to have a payment on this note, which is a, which we don't always have, at least not this blended amount. Usually we would just have an interest payment, but this is a blended principal and interest payment. And then because there are three equal blended payments, the future value of the note is going to be zero. So when the note matures, we're going to pay back nothing because we're paying back the note in three equal blended payments. Normally, when we saw bonds payable in our previous questions, at the, in the future, we'd have to pay back the face amount of the bond. Whereas with an installment note, we're, we're paying back the note in equal blended installments. So if we put all these numbers into our financial calculator and go compute present value, we'll get the present value will equal 100 and let's round it, it's 109.99, so 110,000, okay? So that is going to be the amount that we're going to want to record the land at. So A would be discuss how the purchase price of the land is established. So the land, Uh, should be recorded at the present value of future cash flows on the installment note which is There we go. So that would be your answer to number to A as to how we're going to value the land on an exam. We're going to say the land should be recorded at the present value of future cash flows on the installment note, which is 110,000. All right. So the next thing we're asked to do is prepare an effective interest amortization table for the installment note for the three year period. Okay, so we've seen effective interest amortization tables before, and normally we set them up in a certain way. So we have cash paid, um, interest payable, and then you've got your amortization of premium or discount and your carrying value. Now an installment note amortization schedule is gonna be a little bit different. So we're still gonna have the year. Oops, okay. All right, let's go down here. So we're still gonna have the year here. And then we're going to have the note payment. We're going to have the interest. And then we're going to have the reduction of principal. And then we're going to have our carrying value. So we've got three years here. So we've got 2020. 
So we've got 2020, January, which is when the note was issued. Then we've got December 2020, we've got December 2021, and we've got December 2022. So we know that the note, when we issue the note, it's all these things are zero, but our carrying value starts at 110,000 because that was what we calculated as the present value of the cash flows. And this is the same in, in our other amortization tables. The carrying value always starts out as the present value or the cash that's actually transacted. Um, there's no cash in this situation, but this is the present value of the cash flows because we received land. And then our notes, we know that from the question, we're gonna have three equal blended payments of 43, 456. So we're gonna have three of these, 43, 456. And then on that, we are going to have to record, we know that the, the note requires 9% interest. So if we calculate interest based on the carrying value, just like we normally would, in our bond amortization question. So if I take 110,000 and I multiply it by 9%, that's gonna give me $990 of interest. So in this payment, we can assume that we're part, that the amount, uh, the reduction of principal is, the, is 43,456 minus the 9,900 because that is the required interest rate. In the question it says the, that they, this note requires a required yield of 9%. So therefore, the reduction of principal, which is simply the difference, is gonna be 33,556. And so we'll use the difference there to give us our new carrying value, which is gonna be 76,444. And then 76,444 times 9% is gonna give us the next, you can assume that there's 68,680, sorry. 6880 of interest in the in this payments so the payment the interest is going down just as you would expect and therefore our reduction of principal is going to be 36576 so our new carrying value is going to be 39868 then 39868 times 9% gives us 3588 so the reduction of principal is going to be 39868 and our new carrying value is zero because we want we need the carrying we need this uh, this note on our statement of financial position at zero at maturity because we're paying it back in three equal installments. So at maturity, we're not going to pay anything back, which is different from our previous questions. Okay, so we've set that up. So now we've done A and we've done B. Prepare Tool Limited's journal entry for the purchase of the land and for the first installment payment. Okay, so let's do those. So um, what do we have here? This is C and D. Okay, so C is gonna be purchase of the land. Purchase of land. So it's gonna be debit land. <clears throat> debit land. Credit. Notes payable. And this is going to be for 110,000, which was the present value of the note. That's how it's going to start out on our statement of financial position. Okay. And oh, I got yeah, 110,000, right? Okay. And then the next one is going to be for the first interest payment. December 31st, 2020 interest payment. And we have all the numbers from our amortization table right here as per usual. So we know we're gonna have debit interest expense. For this number, 9,900. We're gonna credit the notes pay, debit the notes payable, sorry, to reduce the notes payable on our balance sheet or statement of financial position by the reduction of the principal. So we're gonna reduce this by 33,556. And, and then we are gonna have cash and we know the cash payment is gonna be this equal blended installment of 43,456, also from our table right here. 
and that's our first journal entry to record the interest payment. And if we had to record the other interest payments, we'd simply take the same numbers from our table up here. All right, well, that concludes this question. So just to summarize, uh, an installment note is where the principal reduces each period. So at the end of the note, you're gonna have nothing on the statement of financial position because you're not gonna need to repay the face value of the note at maturity. That's why it's different than the other questions that we've seen so far. And so our, our effective interest amortization table looks slightly different here. It's very similar, but we're not, rather than amortizing a premium or a discount, we're, we're breaking out the payment on the note, which is a blended payment of interest and principal, we're taking that blended payment and then we're figuring out what portion of that payment is made up of interest and what portion of that payment is made up of principal. And we're recognizing the interest payment on the note as interest expense through our income statement. And we are reducing the principal of the note on our statement of financial position so that at maturity, the note is at zero 